have some fun today. It's time for music class. It's time for music class. We are singing. Tracking the talker. Crisscross applesauce. Hands in our lap. Voices up. Thank you. Here's what we're doing in our music video today. Elementary Academy scholar, scholars will be able to move to music, discover the secret word of the day, discover the life and music of a famous composer, and listen to and analyze music. So those are our goals for the day. The first thing that we're going to do is analyze music. Now you might notice that if you look at the background, I'm not in the music room. That's because when I'm recording this today is election day. So I came home a little early from school, went to vote because that's an important part of um, our society, I think. And then I came to my home to make this video. Uh, because I am home, I don't have my dancing scarf. So I went to my kitchen and I got my sushi dish towel out of the drawer. So that's what I'm going to use for moving to music today. So I'm just remembering now that when the music plays, if the music is going fast, my scarf or my towel today is going to go fast. If it's slow, then I'll move my scarf very slowly. If the music is bouncy, the scarf will be bouncy. If the music is smooth, the scarf will be smooth. If I hear high sounds, I'll put it up here. If it's low sounds, I'll put it down towards the bottom. So you make your scarf match the music. The song that we're going to listen to today is called a uh, funny song, I believe. So let's make our scarf match the music. Here we go. We're going to pause there. We're not going to listen to the whole song. Uh, here's what I noticed about what I heard. I heard in the, the instruments that I heard were guitar. I heard something that sounded a lot like a banjo to me. And then the other instrument I heard was a glockenspiel, which is maybe like a xylophone, you might want to call it. Um, all those instruments are high sounding instruments. So I tried to keep my scarf up high most of the time. I noticed that the music was pretty bouncy. So my scarf was just bopping around. And I would say, bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. music was pretty fast, maybe like an allegro tempo, skipping speed. Cool. I'm going to make my face a little bit smaller. And we're moving on to our next activity, which is our secret word of the day. It's a long one today, so we're going to go as fast as we can to get through it. Uh, let's do the first one first. Is it on a line or in a space? It's on a line. If it's on a line, a sentence is fine. If it's on a line, a sentence is fine. If it's on a line, a sentence is fine. Every good burger deserves fries. What word did I say when I hit the head of that note? Good. Every good. So here I write the letter G. I don't have a pen tool working right now. Uh, so we're just going to pretend that there's a little G there. We're going to remember it. All right. Next one. Is it on a line or in a space? It's in a space, and if it's in a space, you use your face. If it's in a space, you use your face. If it's in a space, you use your face. Start at the bottom and spell the word face. F-A-C-E spells face. What letter did I say when I hit the head of that note? A, A. So we have G, A, and now I gave you the letter for free. L, G, A, L. So far I got gal. Uh, if I'm looking at this note, I notice it is the exact same as the note I just figured out. So we said that this was an A, so that means this one must also be A. That makes it easy. We don't even have to spell it out or anything. So now we have G, A, L, A, because those two are the same. Gala. Gala. Something, something. All right. So this one on a liner in a space. That one's in a space also. If it's in a space, you use your face. If it's in a space, you use your face. If it's in a space, you use your face. Start at the bottom, F-A-C-E, F-A-C-E. 
What letter did I say when I hit the head of that note? C, the letter C. C, so I put a C down here. So I had G, A, L, A, C, Galac. Now I have the letter T for free. That's not a member of our musical alphabet. The letter I, and then we have one more at the end. Um, and I'm noticing that that note is the same as the one we just did, which was C. So I can put a letter C there also. G A L A C T I C. Galactic. When I think of the word galactic, it means something from the galaxy. So that always makes me think of Toy Story and Buzz Lightyear uh, because he goes to infinity and beyond into the galaxy, into the universe. Galactic. Cool word. Okay, today we're going to talk about a famous composer. I'm going to move my face out of the way, put it up here. Uh, today we're going to talk about a guy named Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about his life, a little bit about the history of who Mozart is, a little bit about his music, and then we're going to listen to some of a, a song that he wrote. Uh, so the first thing I wrote was that he was born in Salzburg, Austria. So that's over in Europe across the Atlantic Ocean, uh, and he was there for his whole life. He lived he lived in Austria, and he may have traveled around a little bit, but most, most of his life was spent in Austria and definitely in Europe. His born, birthday was January 17th, 1758, so that's quite a long time ago, just like when we talked about Beethoven. Uh, that was a really long time ago. Um, yeah. But July, January 17th, so he has a winter birthday. His nickname growing up was Wolfie. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. That's quite a quite a mouthful. Uh, so they called him Wolfie for short, his, his siblings and his parents. Mozart's father was a composer and a violinist. So if you're a composer, that means you write music for a living. Violinist is someone who plays the violin. The picture that I put on this screen off to the side, that's Mozart sitting at the piano, or actually that looks to me like it might be a harpsichord. Uh, his father is standing behind him playing the violin. And then that other person standing near him is his sister, and his sister was a trained vocalist, which means she was a singer. So we see a little picture of Mozart's young life where he used to make music with his dad and his, and his siblings. When Beethoven, uh, Beethoven, when Mozart was five years old, he had his first piece of music composed. That means when he was five, that's like kindergarten age, he wrote his first song. Um, and he was able to notate music like we're starting to learn how to do with pitches on the, the treble clef staff. So he actually wrote his own music down and composed his first song when he was five years old. Uh, when he was seven years old, so that's maybe like late first grade, early second grade, um, he wrote his, his first piece of music was published. Something is published, it means that it's printed in a book for other people to buy. So when he was in kindergarten, five years old, he wrote his first piece of music. And then within two years, he had his first song published in a book for other people to buy and perform, which is pretty cool. When he was 12 years old, he wrote his first opera. 12 year old might be around sixth grade. An opera is a song, uh, sorry, is a play that is performed on a stage that is mostly sung. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then it's like a two hour long play that's all sung. He wrote all the music for it when he was like fifth, sixth grade. That's pretty cool. Uh, throughout his life, he traveled and he performed for royalty. So since he lived in Europe, they had kings and queens and stuff. Um, and he became very well known from a very young age as being what's called a prodigy, which means someone who is very talented and has a very, um, a very impressive gift from a very young age. So kings and queens were like, who is this guy? We want to see him. And, you know, back then in the 1700s, they didn't have TVs. They didn't have YouTube. Um, they didn't have tablets or phones where they could just look stuff up if you wanted to see a musician perform, you had to travel or they had to come to you. So he would travel around and perform and kings and queens definitely wanted to see what Mozart could do at such a young age. Um, he had one very cool gift that he liked to show off a lot. He would hear a song once and he could rewrite it from memory. Um, so if I were to, you know, pick up 
my guitar and play for you a song that you never heard before, you would be able to hear that and think, oh, I remember how that goes, and then go write all the notes down and all the rhythms down just from hearing it one time. So he that was kind of like a little party trick that he did. Um, he received a knighthood, which means that uh, some royalty that he visited thought that his contributions to music were so incredible, so amazing, so important that they made him a knight. He had seven children in his life, but he lived very poor, poorly. Um, he and his wife did not manage their money very well. And even though he had a lot of acclaim, a lot of people saying, wow, Mozart, you're really great. He still didn't make a whole lot of money. So he lived a very poor life, even though he was very well known. And Mozart was kind of a character. Uh, I wrote three words that I, as I was reading, I heard him described as eccentric, which means that you're kind of a little bit weird. You do things your own way. I think being eccentric is a wonderful thing. He was very jolly, meaning he was happy all the time. He laughed all the time, but he was also very rowdy. Um, I've heard that he liked to like kind of rough house with his siblings and his buddies. And yeah, he was a rowdy kind of crazy guy, but a very, very talented guy on top of all of that. Uh, uh, his most famous music, I just wrote four examples of some of his favorite songs, uh, most famous songs, Rondo a la Turca, which we've already listened to, The Magic Flute, The Marriage of Figaro, and Eine Kleine Nacht music, which means a little night music. So if you like what you hear today, you can maybe reverse the video a little bit, find this part of the video, and, you know, Search for those if that's something you're growing up at your house lets you do. Uh, he passed away at age 35, so he was pretty young. I'm 34, so I'm only a year younger than Mozart was when he died. Um, so he gained a lot of famousness and a lot of notoriety um, when he wasn't really all that old, because I'm not super old yet. Uh, he was the first composer to write great music for the piano. Back when Mozart was kicking it, the the piano was kind of a new instrument, not super, it wasn't brand new, um, but some people didn't, I mean, people didn't really write a lot of music for piano. So Mozart came along and he said, hey, this instrument's actually pretty cool. We should write some really good music for it. So he was the first one to really do that. I wrote at the bottom, best composer of all time. And that's not really my opinion. That's kind of what the opinion of the world is. If they had to pick one composer from all the composers that have lived throughout history who had the biggest impact, who made the biggest difference in the world, most people would probably say Mozart. Now, Beethoven is my favorite composer, but Mozart probably had a bigger impact. So that's a little bit about Mozart. Today, we're going to listen to a little bit of a song that I'm going to try to pronounce. Ah, vous dirigez maman. You are going to recognize the tune to this song right away. That's my guess anyway. If you um, grew up singing some nursery rhymes, you might know this song. So I wrote five questions that I've written down before, and I want you to try to answer these questions as best you can based on what you hear. After you're done, uh, after the song is done, we're not going to listen to the whole thing, but after we're done, We'll pause, we'll come back together, and we'll review our answers for these. I just remembered I don't have a piece of paper, so I'm going to get something to write off. Okay. Uh, so, is the music fast or slow? It might change partway through. You can wor use words like largo, andante, allegro, or presto. That would be a wonderful thing. Is the music high or low? Is the music smooth or jumpy? Does it bounce around? Is the music loud or soft? Again, uh, sometimes because of how my computer is, my recording might not be very loud, so I'm going to put a link in the description below. And if you can't quite hear, you can just pause the video, jump, listen to it, answer the questions, and then come back at the end. And what instruments do you hear? I maybe gave a couple hints about what instruments they were when I talked about the kind of music that Mozart wrote. So we're going to listen to A vous dirigez maman answer those questions. This song is ooh, almost 12 minutes long. We're going to listen to about three, three and a half minutes of it. Um, so this is something called theme and variations. I'm just going to grab something off camera. Um, theme and variations means that Mozart 
or any composer who happens to do theme and variations, took some melody, took a little tune, a little ditty, and rewrote it a few different times to make it a little bit different. So I'm just going to give you an example of what a theme and variation might be for a song that we sing every day. I'm going to grab my guitar here. Lady is her name. It's time for music class. It's time for music class. We're going to sing la la la. We're going to play. Okay, we sing that song every day. If I were going to do a, a variation of that, uh, it might sound like, It's time for music class. It's time for music class. We're going to sing la la la. Okay, so I changed to finger picking instead of strumming. Um, if I were going to do another one, it might sound like this. It's time for music class. It's time for music class. We're going to sing la la la. That time I did one strum instead of a bunch of strums for every line of the song. So I took the main thing. The main thing pretty much stayed the same. But I added a variation. I changed it just a little bit to make it different. So Mozart took a famous song, a famous melody, and he wrote variations on it. And that's what makes up A vous diriger, maman. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, in case anybody speaks the language that's written in. So I'm going to hit play on the recording, write down your answers to these five questions, and then we'll come back at the end and talk about what we heard. Here we go. One more minute to finish. What instrument is that?
All right, we'll pause there. Um, so maybe you recognize that right away. That's kind of twinkle, twinkle little star. Um, and then Mozart took that and he added some variation. So the first one was pretty normal. It had a little, little embellishment, they call it. Um, but then after that, it started to change a little bit and a little bit more. And if you were to continue listening for the last minutes of that, you would see that it gets very different and it changes quite a bit. And I think ooh, if I remember right, there might be 14 variations altogether, but I can't remember. It's been it's been almost a year since I listened to the song. Okay, we're going to go through these five answers. I'll show you. I wrote mine on a little note card that I have. So you can just kind of compare your answers to mine and see if you're thinking the same way that I am. Is the music fast or slow? It went about this fast. Dun, 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 dun. So whenever I do a tempo, the first thing I always do is compare it to how fast my feet move as I'm walking. And I would say that that tempo moved about how fast I'm walking if I'm walking a little bit quick. So I put that it was andante, which is walking speed. Andante. Some people maybe said allegro. You maybe thought, oh, that's allegro, a skipping speed. Um, but it's andante. It was kind of kind of in the middle. Is the music high or low? I wrote it had a high melody. Um, when you play piano, usually you play with two hands. That right hand plays the melody most of the time, not always. Um, and the left hand kind of provides accompaniment, kind of background noise. So I heard that the melody was always played with the right hand with the higher notes. But there were some low notes accompanying it and doing a little background sound. Is the music smooth or jumpy? I wrote jumpy, and then I wrote staccato. Maybe marcato, and I'm remembering now staccato is short and snappy. Staccato is short as notes can be. Marcato is strong with accents. We sing with strength and deep tone. That's what I heard. But as we were listening and that last one came on, it started to sound a little bit more legato, a little bit. Um, but for what we heard today, I would say either staccato or marcato. Pretty jumpy. Is the music loud or soft? I put this as a medium volume. And then underneath, you can read that word I wrote, mezzo, M-E-Z-Z-O. That means kind of in the middle, medium, not loud, not soft, just kind of right in the middle. What instruments do you hear? There was only one. Piano was the instrument that we heard today. All right, we're going to keep working on analysis with music. If that was challenging for you, that's okay. Just know that we're going to keep working on it. Uh, we only have one thing left to do today, and that is our train exit. So breathe with me, Elementary Academy. Here we go. Thanks for making and listening to music with me today, and I hope you have a magical musical day. We'll see you next time.